Welcome everyone to it. Taste different gaming appetizers. And tonight we got more AI for you. AI is everywhere, it seems. Uh, so uh, the recent uh, China Joy Expo uh, was going on. And at the event, Tencent, Microsoft, and Amazon were pitching AI tools for video game developers. Uh, so the big tech companies out there have rushed to pitch their AI tools to the video gaming firms at China Joy. Basically, if you don't know, China Joy is the China's biggest annual digital entertainment expo, and it, and it was in Shanghai this year. Uh, so, as we all know, AI's got its positive and negatives, you know. And but the big video game um, developing companies out there are thinking that AI is going to be the next tool for helping development. Now, AI is not new in video game development, right? Um, it, it's been around for a long time. I think even games in the '90s were using some type of AI. To help them out it's just getting more prevalent with larger language models and generative ai becoming like spreading like wildfire um so they basically the cloud computing technology is supposed to enable companies to distribute manage and process over the internet a range of software and other digital resources as an as on-demand service so just think of anything like that developer tools that are I think it's like chat gpt it's all remote cloud hosted solutions but they're going to offer services like that that can help them develop their video game. It's supposed to be able to make video game development quicker, um, more streamlined, things like that. Um, you know, so things like this always come with a negative and positive. What I would always ask is if you can use generative AI to make your video game development quicker, are we going to get a discount? Because it's no longer five, six, eight year development cycles. It's three, four year development cycles. We'll never see that, right? These greedy ass companies will say, yep, this helped us to get a video game for half the cost and half the time it was taken but you know we're still going to charge you seventy dollars for it because why not you already you're used to it by now so what if our margins go up from a 40 percent markup to a you know a 60 percent markup you know they don't care um so they're basically saying that they that all these groups are offering a full range of ai services to cover the full life cycle of game development so and every aspect of it that seems insane. I wish I could have saw some of the demos and stuff, but you know, it's not something that I can see over here. Or if it was, it's not translated into English for me. since I don't speak any other language. <laughs> um, you know, so I don't know, man, AI is everywhere. It's center of everything now. And now it's just going to, you know, we all, we, we talked about the, sag after strike because of the likeness and then but it's more along the lines now of just basically saying i want to create a character that looks like this instead of them having to model and all this stuff then they have an ai model it for them and then they take that ai generated model and then they manipulate it to be what they want right or maybe specific scenery or specific story arcs you know they can basically say i want to generate a sci-fi uh video game around these tropes you know and set in this period maybe i want a sci-fi you know cyberpunk game yeah you know and and every aspect of that from storyboarding to development to polishing to line writing everything can be done with the generative ai now and so it's it's taking off but consumers aren't going to reap the rewards of that right because they're never going to pass down those cost savings to us they're going to pass it off to us and you know they're going to claim to hold on to that $70, $80 video game price tag longer because they say we can now afford it because of all this instead of where they should have been reducing the cost of the game in the first place to $50 or $60. Because if they if they can save half the cost, you know, I'm just over exaggerating or just pulling numbers out of my ass right now. But if they can save 50% on a game by using AI and save half the time in development costs, you know, in development time they're it's just it's just not gonna happen where they're gonna save us any money uh so i don't know how i feel about this because to me at some point you know like we've all used ai ai is not perfect and it's gonna take you know maybe they do save some time but it'll probably where it ends up washing out and it's the qc and qa process right they're gonna have to like double check and triple check that they didn't throw in a random banana you know or something somewhere a random phrase that just doesn't seem right or they're lazy developers. They just leave it all in because they don't care. They just have it generated. And they're like, cool, we made a game. Have at it, guys. Um, if these tools are affordable, it might make 
Joe Schmo is like me and Nick able to make our own video game, right? That, that That's a benefit of it right there. But at what cost, right? Can we use those tools for free? You know, kind of like the old Unreal and a few of the other engines that have like, you know, profit sharing or cost sharing and issues where you can do it for free until you start to make a profit, you know, for the smaller indie developers or small people like, like us, if we wanted to get into video development and, you know, no coding skills for me would prevent me from making a video game. But if AI can code for me what I want, and then I just have to proof the models, proof the dialogue, proof them, you know, the concepts and things like that, that might be pretty cool. Um, but Overall, you know, if the big the big dogs are in behind it, pushing their own own solutions, like I said, Tencent, Microsoft, Amazon, and others, it's not it's probably not going to be cheap. I would like to see some cost behind it. Maybe they will have some type of like Unreal Engine does and other ones where they're saying, you know, we can get profit sharing. But since this is a tool, more than likely not, it's going to be like a subscription based service tool like Adobe or something like that. Um, where the cost, how expensive it is, it'd be nice to see. But I'm a little worried about this because I think it's just going to make developers a little bit more lazy in some aspects. Or you're going to get a lot of fly-by-night developers out there, um, you know, thinking like, thinking like, uh, what is it, Days Gone developer, you know? <laughs> or not Days Gone. Days Gone's the motorcycle game. What was yeah. the one that, what was that one that came out that looked like it had ripped off like uh, The Division and a few others? Yeah, um, it got it got like its name infringed upon by a calendar company, and the, there's all sorts of drama. But their game footage looks like it was lifted from like multiple other game sources that had already existed. Um, so there will be fly by night game developers who use this stuff to try to make a quick buck. Um, look at this cool looking game built in Unreal Engine Five. You know, probably took them a, a year to put it out with. AI doing all the work and them not proofing your you seeing that. Um, you know, so uh, I, and I don't, and like I said, I can't remember the name of the game, but we all, there's tons of game developers out there who just push out something to make money. It happens on Steam all the time. Uh, there's a lot of games out there that are just crap. They're pushed out on the Steam. Hopefully they can make a, make a few thousand bucks or something. Um, the day before day before that was it i don't yeah. know why days gone but day the, yeah the day before i had to look for it because i was like i can't remember what that was called yeah and so i don't even know what is that game even out anymore or no. i don't even remember because they did an initial release and then some crap happened and then they shut down and they blamed all the, no they shut down that's right they, they blamed all the yeah. they blamed all the media for their problems and then the people that were behind it started up a whole another studio and then the game team found out about that and they went silent and they got more so you know ai can be good and bad for video game development. And we know that AI has been used in video games in the past, but we have large companies now out there, Microsoft, Amazon, Tencent, are pushing tools to help make the process even easier. Um, so, you know, and, and tools are nothing new, but like at this level and the speed of companies coming out with new tools to help you make video games quicker for less money, it's going to, it's going to be interesting. Um, I, I, I will I will akin this to back in the day when Nintendo decided to let third parties make games. We're gonna get a shit ton of shovelware. So <laughs> that's exactly what I was going to say. Uh, get ready <laughs> for the shovelware. Yeah, that's what's gonna happen. Yep. So, what are your thoughts, man? I mean, outside of the shovelware, the <laughs> the the massive pile of dino shit shovelware we're about to get. What do you think about this? I mean, obviously, good and bad. But right. I think it'll probably be more bad than good. Maybe. I, I don't know. I think it'll be more bad than good. Uh, well, I don't know. I mean, the, you know, we talked about AI before. AI is a big subject. And AI, like I've said before, is cool. It is really cool. And it can be a very positive thing. It's just got to be utilized in the right way. Right. Um, I could understand developers wanting to create AI tools to assist in development of games. And yes, we're not going to reap the benefits as consumers from cheaper games from that. We're not. Um, but is that going to result in lazy game design as well as getting ultimately getting rid of certain roles like voice actors, uh, graphic designers, right? I and mean, they could just have AI generate all the art for them. Uh, programmers coders 
if 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 you get to the point like you said where you don't have there's no coding needed right um it can you know of course at first it's not going to be perfect with coding but at some point it will get to that point right it's eventually going to get to that point and so when it does it's going to be like chat gpt now where you can type in i would like an email that is uh directed towards blah and you know whatever his subject uh, and this is what i wanted to about and it spits out this nice heartfelt letter or whatever the case may be right and you're like that sounds really good you're going to it's going to get to the point where you're going to basically say i want a video game that is about this and in this type of world and whatever. And it's going to generate the entire thing for you, right? From the characters to the dialogue, to the setting, to everything, right? At a click of a button, which is cool for us that can't make video games to be able to do something like that. That's really awesome. Um, But then again, you still, you know, like everything else, you still need someone at the wheel right? You can't have these different aspects of, of, uh, uh, AI and, and different, whatever it is, like even, uh, AI, you know, the, the driverless cars, right? You still need somebody (laughs) behind the wheel of, of it in order, in, in case something goes wrong or someone to be able to, to take control. Right. Um, but otherwise it'll just run rampant and go wild. So, uh, you know, it's an exciting time, but at the same time, it's kind of a, you know, it's scary territory, right? It's new ter- I mean, AI has been around for a long time, but it's really like going fast. Like, I mean, from the introduction of like to public stuff, like, uh, you know, chat, uh, GPT, it's first alliteration and some of the original AI stuff that we had out there to what it is now. I mean, you got to think about, you know, if you think about when it started for public consumption, right? Not like the stuff that studios and various things have had, but like all out pump, public consumption on the internet and stuff like that, that people can freely use. If you think about it now compared or then compared to now, it's not been that long of a time frame between what it started with and where we're at now. It's the same with like gaming and stuff like that, like technology and games and CGI and stuff like that. If you think about it, it hasn't been that long since, I mean, the Nintendo came out in, in the U.S. in 85, you know, uh, and that that's the year I was born. I'm 38. So it's been in 38 years we have the technology and gaming that we have now, right? And it only took that long. Uh, that's not very long, right? And, and, and ultimately, from that point onward, it's just getting quicker and quicker. Um, the, the advancement of everything is, is going at such a rapid pace. It's it's insane. So we're going to see this rapid, uh, pace continue with, uh, AI and all these different constructs. It just depends on how it's utilized and, um, you know, what we end up getting. I hope we don't, we probably will. I hope we don't get a bunch of shovelware because again, it's kind of like, I think a lot of the big developers and stuff like that won't do a lot of QA testing and won't do a lot of polishing because they'll be like, it's good enough, right? Because that's mainly what they give us is they give us it's good enough, right? Um, or we'll patch it later type thing. We'll fix it on the fly uh, more than fixing it there. So they'll be able to pump games out. You know, you'll get a, co- a new Call of Duty every month uh, come in the future. <laughs> hopefully not but you know what i'm saying like it won't take them very long at all to pump these games out and uh these development cycles will be shorter and shorter but will the games degrade you know will they get worse and worse right as as the software gets easier i i I honestly don't know we'll have to see depends on how advanced the ai systems are and how well they do things you know again starting out you think about AI pictures, you know, starting out at the beginning, AI pictures were kind of like, yeah, you can tell it's AI generated. Nowadays, it's, you can still tell, but you got to look, you know, you got to pay attention to the, to the, to the screenshot or the picture that someone AI generated. It's getting better and better, right? Even with emails and text and voice and 
all these different aspects of AI that are being utilized and, and created and advanced upon is just getting bigger or uh, bigger and better uh, in a short time span. So you're going to see, I think, uh, you know, unlike some of the stuff that has come and gone, I don't, AI doesn't, the, the whole AI fad, right? The marketing of AI, there's a lot of marketing for AI out there, as well as the AI aspects that they're trying to, uh, companies are trying to put into various aspects of life. Um, you know, we see a lot of fads or, you know, a lot of businesses try to do things that just don't catch on 3D, you know, 3D tried it again, but it didn't, didn't really catch on. Um, and, and, you know, there's other aspects too, but I think AI did, you know, I think it's one of those aspects that did catch on. A lot of people are interested in it and it is advancing quickly. I don't think it's something new you'll see die off as a fad like 3D TVs or, um, you know, I, I was kind of worried about VR, but it seems like VR is doing pretty well for itself, even though it still hasn't quite hit the mainstream, but it, there's, you know, it hasn't died off yet. Right. But there, you know, there are various aspects that do and, and some that don't, it doesn't seem like AI is going to be one of those things that dies off. So we're going to see its advancement, uh, go even quicker. I feel like, uh, and it's going to be, Amazing in one aspect and scary in the other on what we get in the future. So uh, it, it doesn't surprise me that companies are out there trying to get their AI tools uh, into the hands of, of developers and different companies out there to try to get them to invest in their particular technology. And uh, I'm sure Microsoft and Amazon and all these different companies are putting a lot of money, investing a lot of money into that because they see that as the future of things. And uh, I, I agree with them. I pr it probably is, right? Um, you know, Skynet's on the way. So just a matter of time. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, because what I can see happening is instead of like, instead of them having to hire a whole crap ton of development staff, like they don't, you know, normally in a, in a game development studio, you'll find junior developers, mid-level developers, senior developers, principal engineers, you know, senior sta seniors and staff engineers and fellow engineers and things like that you will have like a team of nothing but junior and mid-level developers, right? Cause they just need to pump, uh, pump into a generative AI program. They no longer need those principal and staff engineers to kind of guide them along the process. They'll just take code generated by AI, go in and, you know, because if they're already, if they already understand levels of development, they can just take generative AI code and piece it, piece it apart and see what's, what maybe isn't working right or, you know, troubleshoot the code. They, they no longer need that senior principal staff engineers to kind of guide them and say, we need to do this at this step. And, you know, this is, this may be what they teach you as best practices, but in real world scenarios, it doesn't work because of this and that, you know, they'll just pump all that stuff through a, a generative AI platform, you know? So I see that happening. So they're saving money by not having to hire all these principal and staff engineers. And not having and, to pay them as much. Right. Right, because you don't have to pay junior and mid-level engine developers that much money, you know. Your your money, I mean, obviously engineering degrees and engineering and developers get paid quite a bit because they should. They're making they're writing the code, they're doing all that. But when you get up to like principal and staff and fellow, you're making big, big bucks in development as well as you should. You have the knowledge and years of experience of what works, what doesn't work, you know, and you're pretty much self-managed. You don't you're not managed by a manager, you just you know, you're the top dog and you mentor those below you at that level, right? You're the, you know, you're the collaborative person who really is the de facto end of the line. When the code doesn't work, that person's going to be the one to come in and fix it for you. Um, so, you know, that they're saving money at that level. And then they have all the, you know, I don't know if they would be able to shrink their QC and QA because I think that'd be one department that may increase, but I don't know. I, I, if they're lazy developers, like we said, they'll just be like, oh, yeah, we can just cut them out. You know, we don't need that many. We'll create some type of automation flow to test the game. <laughs> you know, it won't catch things like the or, third arm or the extra limbs early or access. Like so they'll yeah. just let the community troubleshoot all their issues. <sighs> yeah, don't get me started on early access. <laughs> And that's probably what'll happen. Everything comes it'll out. Be, it'll be AI anymore. fixed, right? So what you do as a community <laughs> you is when you, you when you report it, the AI takes over, finds that bug you reported, and fixes it on the fly. Yeah, 
Could be automation processes may be that way in the future. But yeah, and then, you know, because um, AI is already used pretty heavily in like marketing and, and image generation for the game, right? You're like the marketing stuff and the stuff that's all over the internet is a lot of AI generated and then touched up by your, your artistic staff and your, your, uh, your develop, you're not your developers, but your, you know, your, I, I don't know why I'm drawing a blank all of a sudden, but your marketing team, the people who do all the concept arts and put together all that AI has always, has been in that market for a long time. Um, so and, you know, it's always been an anim- it's been an animation for a long time as well, but it's just really exploding in video games and lots of turmoil behind it. Um, the la- new large language models and generative AI are just exploding in the market. I-, I can't say I can't stress it any other way. It's just exploding. It just and it's there. It's like everywhere. It's spreading it's worse than wildfire. It is everywhere. I mean, every time you turn around AI, this AI, that and you're just like, wow. You know, what the heck is going on? So it's uh, and, and it's everywhere. All the news articles this week and stuff. It's just AI this, AI that, you know, obviously the actor strike is big in the news, but then you're just like and then it just pulls out all the the little scurrying mice are coming out of the woodworks. There's AI in this. There's AI in that. And these people used AI for that. And they use AI for this. I mean, just look what they did with, you know, and, and to prove it, it's not nothing new. I mean the whole Tupac concert thing they did, that was AI, you know, AI played a lot of the rendering and everything of that and the hollow, you know, a lot of that stuff. So AI is not anything new, but the whole simplicity of AI has just exploded. Like there's so many tools like Dolly out there for image generation and, and and chat GPT for anything. I mean, you can, you could put just about anything in chat GPT and it'll simplify it in layman's terms for you. There's some grammatical errors or some. Sometimes the information is not quite there. You have to double check and everything. But people are lazy and they just don't check it. Like there's been the whole educational uh, while uh, hoopla a couple of years ago about kids writing their dissertations and theses from Chat GPT, and they were leaving in stupid things that AI put in there that it was just like off the wall, and that's how they were getting busted. And they were running tools against it to find it. But now it's getting better and harder to detect and harder to detect. Um, you know, I, I wonder how long it's going to be before something passes the touring test, you know, with this stuff. So it'll be interesting. I mean, I, it could probably fool a lot of people what chat GPT could right now. I mean, everywhere you turn around, IVR systems are using it in, you know, call centers and things like that. The first line of contact in those, I don't know how it's been so long since I, have it, since I have talk to a real person in like a chat support because that first line chat support is always an AI these days. It is never a real person. No matter how much you think it is, it's always some type of chat bot with a language model behind it that the company has built or that they have leased from a a learning uh, language model from another company that sells it or releases out their language model for things like that. Everybody is using it for their chat support these days. And You know, it's hard to tell sometimes it slips up and that's how, you know, because it says something stupid or off the wall and you're like, oh, that's not a person saying that's behind that, you know, so uh, good and bad, I guess. I think it's going to lead to a lot more fly by night games that we had that will either live in in early access hell forever or it'll be out within a year after its development started and they'll get a quick buck and the developers will disappear and the studio will fold. And I'll start another one, another one, another one. So, uh, scary world out there in AI. It's also f- interesting and fascinating what's coming out of it. I kind of interested to see what's going to be in the next year or five years. What I'm surprised that we haven't seen yet. And maybe it is out there. I just haven't seen it yet. But I'm surprised WebMD WebMD doesn't have an AI service yet. You know, <laughs> we're going to give you a virtual doctor's visit. Uh, we're going to have this AI doctor ask you a bunch of questions and then we'll give you a diagnosis. That's going to be the next one, right? Like everybody has teledoc. Welcome to AI teledoc. <laughs> You're just going to talk to an AI bot. You know, it's going to be like, this one goes in your mouth. This one goes in your butt. Oh, no, nope, wrong way. You know, it's going to be that, you know, it's going to just be some robot diagnosing you, which might not be half bad, right? It can check things that a person can't in an instance, but at the same time, you lose that human aspect of medicine. Because it's always called practicing medicine. It's not right. Yeah. You know, so interesting things and scary things. But, Nick, you got anything else about Skynet before it wakes up? 
No, uh, like I said, like you said, it's 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 scary, but at the same time, it's very interesting. I'm I'm very interested in it, uh, and at the same time, kind of afraid as to what you know it's going to end up being. But I still am interested in it, and I still use it, and I enjoy using it. It's just you know can't let it run wild. That's the only thing. Yep. So, what do you think about AI? AI and video games specifically or AI in general, you know, it's kind of got off the rails with other topics around AI, but what do you think about AI and video game development? It's been around for a while, but it seems like tools are becoming more modern and mainstream and everybody is uh, getting their hands on some, you know, and it's being pushed at all the gaming or electronic expos out there as, as proof by the China joy expo that's going on. Uh, what do you think about it? Do you think it's going to be good for video games, bad for video games, you indifferent, you know, let us know what you think down in the comments and, as always, we hope you enjoyed this episode and hope to catch you in the next one. 